Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Thomas Cavanaugh Construction is proud to present Live from the Hunt Camp! Valley Heritage Radio's annual trek to the grand old camps of the Ottawa Valley. Now, let's join the Hunt Camp crew and see where they are today. Hello, and welcome to Live from the Hunt Camp on Valley Heritage Radio! Yay! We're almost lost in the wilds of Killaloo, Haggerty and Richards Township. And today we are at the Handsaw Hunt Camp. Yay! Let's start off by thanking Thomas Cavanaugh Construction for sponsoring this program as always. And it's a real honour to be here, invited to the Handsaw Hunt Camp by none other than the gentleman I'm going to speak to now, Chris Gino. All right. Yay! That wasn't very good. <laughs> I only know Chris. Chummy. Oh, you're known as Chummy. We're known as Chummy, yeah. Okay, uh, well, I thought it was only one of you, but there we are. We've got, <laughs> we got the Royal Wee in there. Chris, thanks ever so much for inviting us here. We're going to have a chat with your family to talk all about the hand camp later on. But firstly, uh, Jerry Bim wants me to make sure the listeners get a chance to know how you came to be on the programme, how you made it absolutely clear that you insisted on being in the programme when you first approached the station. Well, usually uh, the family here in the Hunt Cam, we, uh, Thursday night's a real special night for us. We all get together. All the wives and mothers and children are all allowed in on Thursday night. And we have a... Women, we bring all the food in. <laughs> oh, well, enough. That's Chris's mom. Yeah. Yeah, it's pizza night, so um, so we have a lot of musicians. We have a lot of uh, friends that we welcome in, and that make the night so special. And we have, uh, over the years, collected some amazing videos. So uh, that was the first thing I sent in to Jerry. And uh, I think it was about eight minutes, um, he replied back and said, you guys are in. So, Well, that's great. It was awesome. <laughs> now, I think, t- hang on, I think the one that sold it was our buddy, our good buddy Greg with the harmonica. Yeah. He got us in, so. Well done, Greg. For listeners in listening in black and white, he's the one in the blue. Why do you call it the handsaw hunt camp? Well, my uncle Paul, he's uh, a so-called carpenter, but uh, <laughs> but uh, that's Paul Alche- Olchesky. That's Paul Olchesky. Right, yeah. So uh, he's the good-looking one out of all the brothers. So. Um, <laughs> we're back in the woods, and uh, I would say we're all rich and have a lot of tools and equipment, but when we built this, no one had a damn generator, so uh, we uh, love our music, and uh, we would play, um, play some music when we were building it, and so we built the entire camp with using a handsaw. Wow. So, uh, just went with handsaw hunt camp, so. Well, it looks, and I see the pieces of lumber there you put up on the ceiling there, they actually had... Uh, Bits of moose stuck to them, and yet you put them up there anyway to exactly, hold the roof up. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Piece by piece with uh, two moose horns and yeah. uh, stuck them up. And lots of racks as well from prize trophies from previous years of hunting. Well, we'll get into that, I'm sure, soon enough. But okay. uh, <laughs> most of these racks uh, we either found in the bush or they were given to us. Uh, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> Uh, who's around the room? Basically what we have here on, a, on our dead end, Byers Creek Road, is we have uh, the Olszewski clan. There's five brothers and six sisters. And uh, the majority of the brothers, I think all of them hunt with us. So we have the oldest one, Morris Olszewski. Next in line, well, he's kind of a part-time hunter, is Mr. Ronald Olszewski. Yeah, he snuck out. Next in line is Paul Olszewski, the, uh, the camp owner. Good hey, Paul. Good looking And the youngest brother, Peter Olszewski, went to see the Ottawa Senators hammer the Canadians tonight. Yeah. So. Yeah. My mom, she's uh, Phyllis Gino. Phyllis, good age, She's Phyllis. the pizza cook, so. Oh, she cooks fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And another chef we have is Paul's wife. And then uh, my dad and myself and my brother. And we have another... Uh, brother-in-law to Paul, uh, Jimmy Mask, and his two brothers, so. Well, that's great. So, basically, you're all only family who actually come here to hunt, you were saying earlier. Just family, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we've got three generations represented here today. Isn't that great? We got three. We actually might have, uh, yeah, we got three here today, but he's kind of the Cal Gino would be the fourth uh, generation coming up, so. Well, and right. he'll be, he's not going to hunt Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so where's the other young gentleman, this young gentleman there? Well, I've been talking to him now. What's his name there? That'd be Dylan Olszewski. Uh, Dylan uh, went to school uh, for two hours this week for picture day. Oh, and I see. And then he was gone. He was back in the camp, so. Well, you've got to do that. You have to the... go for the important stuff. And this young young lady and gentleman over there, brother and sister by the looks, who are they? This is uh, Chloe and Alec Olszewski. Now, you all own the property 
that surrounds the actual camp you were saying. You've got about a thousand acres that you can add all together. Yeah, we do. Um, it is one spot that uh, our great uncle uh, Lambert Sibolsky, he was the owner of uh, the majority of the property here, and it's uh, it's a beautiful piece of property, especially yeah. the homestead. And I'd like to call a shout out to the uh, neighboring gang, the uh, Rakuskis and the Masks. They're coming in later, but they uh, they love our property so much. This one spot, they keep crossing over to retrieve some of their bucks. So uh, um, it's a beautiful view, and they must want to uh, take advantage of it. Uh, well, you know, Jan- steady, steady catch them there. What are you trying to say? <laughs> Jealous neighbors, it can be a terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> Can you yeah. share with us the story about the, the taillights on the tree as you drove us in here today? <laughs> well, the taillights in the tree, we had, a, we had a neighboring gang with a couple young lads that just kind of showed up for one evening to play some cards. And, and they just uh, had their camp at the end of our driveway. So they came in with uh, one of their fathers, probably an 80,000 Dodge truck. Wasn't built that great, obviously. Is that the mileage or the price? <laughs> But um, they had a few whiskeys that evening, and when they just got out, they couldn't make it out the driveway and and ran into one of our uh, 80-year-old poplar trees. So uh, they hit the gas instead of the brake. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a little memento. It's probably a $200 tail light hanging in that poplar tree. So it's very noticeable as you come in. It's a great reflector, isn't it? It is. It is. Just Michael Summers. Everybody knows him as uh, as Baggy in the parts here, yeah. but uh, he does a lot. Of- I got that nickname by my little sister. Uh, I always wore my, it's like you hand me down hockey equipment. Yeah. So I wore my brother's hockey pants and she couldn't say Michael, so she called me Baggy. <laughs> and, and it stuck <laughs> the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, like, it is everybody's a nickname. Well, it yeah. does indeed. Now, you've got a few yarns you can share with us, something uh, about your memories here, hunting and doing things like that, Mike? Before hunting even started, I'll come like, to baseball, hockey, and it just carries on through hunting, right? Well, so I was yeah. going to talk to these yeah. gentlemen about uh, a story a couple years ago about a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> oh, <that's Yeah>. a- <laughs> So Mr. Uh, Baggy was, instead of uh, sighting in his gun on the Sunday, he was uh, getting into a few refreshments at the camp yeah. and Monday morning he got into the bush and for the first time that year looked down the barrel of his gun to check his sights and noticed the front sight was missing from the gun. So uh, being just shortly after Halloween he had a Tootsie Roll in his pocket yeah. and chewed it up and stuck it over the end of the barrel and propped up a sight. But the best part of it was that evening back to the hunt camp the Tootsie Roll from the heat of the hunt camp melted. <laughs> so again, Tuesday morning, he had to prop it up again. And of all things, later on that week, I had the yeah. the opportunity to hunt beside him on a chase. And if he didn't shoot and filled my doe tag <laughs> with the Tootsie Roll. Tootsie roll so. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, but also, it wasn't a good shot. I, I shot, a little, right. shot a little high. But you, but, got, it, you got it right in the Tootsie Roll. But it went right in the Tootsie Roll. Right tootsie roll. Tootsie yeah. roll. Wow. <laughs> I forgot about that story. Yeah. Something else, Chris, we like to ask, and uh, we, we would like some response to this, please. Uh, who is the best hunter in the camp? Oh, Jamie! Where's Jamie? Jamie! <laughs> Jamie. Come on over, Jamie. He just, he just shot his first Here deer. He comes. Oh, Jamie, and what's this? Are you Jamie? Yeah. Are you a mask? Mask, yep. Jamie, and uh, nice to meet you. And so, how long have you been hunting at this camp? Well, I've been about four years now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Four. And uh, what they all claim uh, that you are the best hunter. Can you tell us why? Well, I've shot too many bucks this year in our camp. <laughs> oh, right, right. Oh, you're outstanding then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can I ask him yeah. how many he's shot in his career? How many have you shot in your career? That's the first one. <laughs> That's the first one. Good. Okay, well, uh, I'd like to ask you to, to give your nomination. They've kindly nominated you as to who's the best hunter. Uh, who do you think is the worst one? Uh, don't be shy. <laughs> I don't be know about that one. Be careful. Be easy now. <laughs> You can't nominate one for the worst hunter? I can't nominate one. Okay, well. (laughs) Oh, Chubby. I don't know know if you can see it, but his father, he doesn't want to say nothing about his father, but his dad has got the same bullets that he's had since the 90s. (laughs) And if you can look under the large moose rack, we did have to skin out one small little horn. Oh, no. Can you describe that, please, to the listeners? Well, let's just say the four-inch screw... That's holding the rack is the biggest thing on the rack. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks uh, for this, Chris. So far, we've been having a great, great visit with you. We're just going to take a break. We're going to have a quick word from our sponsor, Thomas Carvanagh Construction, and we'll be right back in just a moment on Valley Heritage Radio. All right. 
It's hunting season in the valley, and Thomas Cavanaugh Construction would like to remind you to be a responsible hunter and to remember these important safety tips. Always wear your hunter orange. Be aware of your surroundings. Don't hunt alone. Be sure of your target and practice gun safety. These tips will help ensure that hunting remains a safe activity for all concerned. A message from the folks at Thomas Cavanaugh Construction. Have a great hunt. Well, here we are back after the break at the Handsaw Hunt Camp on Valley Heritage Radio. Yay! And we're having a whale of a time, a fantastic time here. Chris Gino, the gentleman who invited us here. Now, Chris, we've got some musicians going to play. But one of them you mentioned uh, is you left him to last as one I of the family members. I left him. He was uh, last but not least. The only true musician. We uh, we all feel we're musicians in the hunt camp, but we have one guy that can actually play an instrument. <laughs> And um, again, his uh, he's a cousin. His mother is uh, Dolores. Uh, her maiden name was Olszewski. So it's Mike uh, Rikoski. He's the only guy that can actually uh, play a song. And he's going to lead us off in a minute. But he's... Uh, hey! Right, so who else we got in now? We got Baggy Summers. We got, my again, my uncle uh, Ronnie. Rocket Streetcar Olszewski on the guitar. Whoa! Whoa. We got uh, Greg Hunt on the... Uh, Mouth organ, and we got uh, Tom Lammy on the guitar again, so they're going to lead us in. Okay. Let's hear five musicians. To wish a uh, happy birthday to my mother. Yay! Yay! Happy birthday, <laughs> I was born by the railroad track. Well, the train was a whale and a whale ride back. Well, Papa left Mama. Quite young Said now one of these days You're gonna follow me son Whoa, oh, 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 I ain't ever satisfied And I got an empty feeling Deep inside Promised land. I ain't ever satisfied. Then at the gate, and I had the key in my hand. St. Peter said. 
said, come in, boy, you're finally home. I said, no, thank you, Pete, I'll just be moving along. Just about ready to wrap things up, and before we do, uh, what does the, to you and the family and friends that you have here, what does the whole hunt camp experience mean? What's the big thing about it for you? Well, the best part about this hunt camp is whether you guys were here or not, this place would be uh, full <laughs> yeah. with uh, friends and family and good music and good food. So this is this is what hunting's all about to our guests. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, and uh, before we leave, I'd like to ask you to tell the listeners about these beautiful jackets that uh, you've supplied us with to wear for the whole hunt camp season. Tell the listeners about them, please. Well, we had a great opportunity with the company I work for, Columbia Sportswear, and through our great sponsor, a great account of mine, Afelski Shoes in Killaloo, and through Columbia Sportswear, they... Uh, both of them came together and donated the uh, the fleece, uh, the mossy oak for the crew. So uh, I'm telling you, you guys look uh, pretty handsome. Oh, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought the hunters got them too. Oh. <laughs> Do you get that on well, okay? <laughs> We very much appreciate it. And uh, I think all of the folks here at the hunt camp t- t- this evening, the musicians are going to carry on. But please give yourselves a big hand for oh, being so good today. And we hope you've enjoyed life in the hunt camp here on Valley Hunters Radio. We want to thank the gang from the Handsaw Hunt Camp. Who are carrying on the party without us. (laughs) Thank them for their invitation and their wonderful welcome today. We hope you good people have many more years of happy hunting together. Also want to remind you to listen tomorrow as we visit the Belmore Lodge near Otter Lake. Thanks of course to our Felsky Shoes for these beautiful jackets we've been supplied with. And of course, the program, as we all know, wouldn't be possible without the generous sponsorship and support of Thomas Kavanagh Construction. So until tomorrow, from the entire Valley Heritage Radio, live from the Hunt Camp crew, see ya! Thanks for listening to Live from the Hunt Camp, brought to you by Thomas Kavanagh Construction. Be sure to keep that radio tuned to 98.7 FM and join us again next time. From the whole Valley Heritage Radio Hunt Camp crew, have yourself a great day.